Welcome back to the channel guys. Today I'm pleased to announce the launch of Mesh OS for TDEC. So Mesh OS for TDEC is my new firmware I've been working on for about, I don't know about October last year, something like that. And it's actually my first Mesh Core firmware release. So I'm pretty kind of <laughs> nervous about this, but basically this is what I want to show you today. It's the Mesh OS TDEC firmware. So you can see here, the screen here, is on and the device is running. We've got a clock on there, we've got a notification. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to show you the features of Mesh OS. Um, and I really hope you're going to like this because I've, I've poured heart and soul into this. So to begin with then, what is Mesh OS and why? So Mesh OS is basically a communications firmware for Mesh Core networks. So this is a completely off-grid mesh network, which is becoming very popular at the moment for communications. And I've designed Mesh OS to be the best it possibly can be as a device to use as a communicator on those networks. So, of course, you can use a smartphone. You can use an Android smartphone with Mesh Core. The Android app is absolutely excellent. It works, obviously, on iOS as well. There's an iOS version of the app. You know, you can go about your business and use Mesh Core on a standard phone. So you don't need a device like this. However, many people want to use a standalone device that is not connected to the internet, doesn't have all the bloatware and spyware and other things that are associated with a full modern, you know, Android or iOS operating system now. It's pretty crazy how much stuff is packed into those devices now. So it's kind of refreshing to go back to having a device that really is just a messaging device. It does what it's supposed to do. And the goal of Mesh OS is to do that the best you possibly can on the limited device resources that you've got. So these TDEX, pretty cheap hardware, just have an ESP32 in there and a lower radio, and it's very, very kind of primitive stuff. However, it's also pretty powerful because you can do some pretty amazing stuff with ESP32 um, these days. So as you can see, the screen timeout thing's kind of coming in and out as I'm talking, and that's the first little indication that this thing actually feels a little bit more like what you're used to, um, you know, using a smartphone device, for example. So you can see here, this is touch screen. You can literally touch onto um, the chat window and you can scroll up and down on the messages. Um, nice, good performance, high frame rate, and everything just feels pretty nice on there. You can also scroll up and down um, using the trackball as well. So you can see here, we've got channel tabs at the top here. You just touch those and it will switch between those tabs. DMs will actually come up as a separate tab at the end here as well. So you can kind of manage all your messages and stuff from one sort of single point here, which is this main like chat screen. So to send a message, you just start typing on the TDEC keyboard and you can also send emojis as well now. So you just hit the little dollar sign on there and you get this emoji panel come up. And there's a few emojis on there to get you started. Um, more will be added a bit later. Send the message, that just goes out to the public and we can see a little message tick on there to show that the message has gone out. Now, I'm gonna show you something pretty cool here, which basically this whole firmware has kind of been built around. So this firmware actually started life as a terminal firmware for the TDEC. So we've got a full mesh cord terminal built into this thing. And basically you can just see here exactly what's going on. So this is like kind of backtracks as well. It's got a bit of history on there. So you can see everything that's going on on the mesh. And we can see here my meshes that I just sent out was repeated by my two repeaters, their signal strengths, and a little report there saying total repeaters detected, blah, blah, blah. You've got adverts on here, you've got every bit of information from the mesh that you'd ever need coming in here. And what's more, you can actually type commands into this as well. So you can kind of just go in here and just type help and hit the help button and you can see all the different commands. Look at that lot. So you've got basically, you can do anything on this. You could just use this terminal um, on its own. And that was kind of how I kind of started this firmware just by using this and then got carried away with the OS, um, <laughs> the kind of gooey side of it. So we can exit out of that. We've got lots of other things here as well, including some sort of nice features like we have a noise floor meter. So you can just hit that and it will just scroll through and it will show you the noise. We can see that I'm quite near the computer here. So that's probably why that's, that's kind of showing um, quite a high level there. Exit out that. Everything's kind of done the same way with these, like these little pop-ups um, with the rounded edge corners. I quite like the design. It's kind of fiddling around, trying to get something to look right. Um, but 
I hope you'll agree. It, it's looking... I like the look of it now. I'm quite happy with it. Which is why I'm showing you. But yeah, so we've got another one here. Signal, mesh signal. This basically is like a little um, uh, sort of mobile phone type mesh signal meter. I've always thought this would be really cool to have on firmware. You just look down, you can just see this. And that's actually replicated there as well. So you can see down here, if you tap on the signal bars, it will just bring that up. The little C0 there is actually the last repeater that we heard anything from. Any packet, it will just print that little thing there. So you can see 7A now, that's my other repeater um, that's just kind of, um, you know, made a little transmission. So you can see that there. That's quite useful. You can have that on. And that is actually on the home screen as well. When the home screen's dimmed, you can see that there. So you can just pull this out your pocket. You can just see the mesh signal um, in your area. It's quite good. If nothing's been received for a while, it will just go kind of blank. So we've got a herd list as well, which is another nice little feature. So you can see all the stations heard, their distances. So you can see here that it's some pretty crazy distances, 156 kilometers, 122. You know, there's loads, loads in here. 80 adverts have kind of come up. So yeah, try and find ones that are you know, um, really, really long distance. It doesn't look like there are any at the moment. But um, yeah, so you've got area as well here. You notice this on the um, right hand side here. It's showing you the area which is basically used um, or calculated from the GPS coordinates. So there might be a little bit of kind of, you know, um, adjustment on this to do, uh, you know, coming with, with future updates and stuff. But it gives you a ballpark area of where those people are. I've always wanted to see that. Um, so now we can do that on there, which is pretty neat. If you're out and about, then obviously these signal meters will probably change because obviously all of these are coming from my home repeater, so that's why the signal is, is really strong. So you can get back out of that. That's another nice little feature. Um, we can do repeaters as well, so you can actually search the repeaters, just hit search in there. So I can type in like heart, It'll bring up all the Hartford repeaters that I've got in here. This is only two. Um, looks like Hartford Town hasn't been haven't had, it, had its time set. So you can go to Hartford Omni. You can log in there. Hit that. Do a, do a guest login. It'll probably do admin, actually, because I've logged in before. Um, you can get your neighbours list from there. You can basically get your stats from there as well from the repeater. So you can do all of the stuff you'd normally do. You can actually sync your clock on that as well. So it's pretty quick to sort of manage your repeaters on that. And then you can obviously adjust the path and exit out of that. That's your repeater list. Now, one thing about the repeater list that I've actually kind of been always thinking is it's a bit annoying having all of the repeaters in your contacts list. So the workflow I usually use is, is this really. So we use Finder to find our repeaters. These are our repeaters that are in my immediate area, my own repeaters. So you can use that to actually find um, my own repeaters so it's bringing up one repeater at the moment um, would do wouldn't it for the test and then we can hit add and then basically once you add that that's created a whitelist of repeaters that will be added to your repeaters list so effectively any repeater that beacons it's not going to get added to your repeater list you can see here I've got lots of repeaters in the list at the moment because I was kind of experimenting I've got 117 but if we head into settings what we can actually control if we hit that, we can actually control whether repeaters get added to our list or whether they don't. So at the moment, you can see all added and then whitelist only. And then we can also turn on and off whether clients, chat clients get added as well. So you can control for once <laughs> what actually gets added to your contact list, which is quite, quite neat. So contacts, very simple. Contacts is just literally people, chat contacts, you can see there. And no repeaters will appear in here. That is just purely just, you know, people. And of course, it's the same for the repeaters list. We just literally see repeaters in there and room servers as well. They're displayed in this one. And you can search here. So you can type in like a one byte or two byte ID, um, whatever you want. You can just type in their name, any part of the name. It should find um, what you're looking for when you're searching that way. And then, of course, from here, you can actually manage your repeater, do all the stuff we've just seen um, previously, like log into your repeater there. So you can see it's designed for simplicity. 
see everything you need is there. You can have a look in the settings. So in the settings menu, we've got username at the top. This is also part of the onboarding flow. So it'll ask you to set your username there. Quite self-explanatory. Channels, there's four channels available here. These are hashtag channels, so you can just go in here. Um, one of them's um, preset as public, which you can't change. And then you've got other ones here, which you can enter a hashtag, um, hashtag channel for that. And you know you can just add them quite straightforward there. We might add more of those channels um, when I sort of redo the a new tab view thing that I'm kind of looking at doing to add more channels in there. So that will be coming later. Um, also add contacts and repeaters. We've already covered that. Always on display. This is quite an interesting one. It's a kind of a gimmicky thing that you have on your on your smartphone. Um, but um, basically, it's this screen here. What will happen is this will just stay on continuously in a dimmed state. So you see this dim in a minute, um, like that, and that takes very little power actually and it just enables you to just have like this always on um, display and you'll see notifications pop up here as well um, you know actually in my experiments it doesn't really take a huge amount more power really it's quite interesting um, it runs for about a day uh, this this firmware I'm using it runs runs for about a day on these modern TDEC um, pluses and I just charge it at night and I use it quite a lot during the day so it's always kind of on um, which is quite interesting so so that's that you can turn that off that's toggleable you've got um, radio settings here this again is part of the onboarding flow you can just set your region um, regional radio settings if you need to set another setting you can do that by the terminal it's pretty straightforward to do that all the um, functions are, are supported there set time you get actually get time set by the mesh so it actually will set it's time um, via companion radios on the mesh which is quite quite neat or it will do it by um, GPS as well but actually if you're in a busy area you just turn this on first kind of you know message or whatever you get it will actually set its time um, companions tend to be pretty accurate because they're actually like um, you know uh, running on the app which is synced and the clock is synced um, to the phone's time so it's normally pretty accurate that way so we've got save messages by default this is on um, it saves messages on the internal flash if you want to turn that off it won't save any messages ever um, but obviously they'll stay in the memory whilst the device is on um, and that's just basically like for RAM message storage and then if you kind of hit this side button the device will just reset all the messages are gone um, we've got show hops as well so you can turn that on and off that basically just shows this little hop counter here um, down the bottom um, five hops and then we've got screen timeouts pretty self-explanatory notifications so notifications you've got sound notification which when the screen is is um off or in the home screen state you'll get like a, a little did it sound um and that's like a standard message tone that's baked in i'm going to add extra message tones to um this which you can have on the sd card like you do with the ripple firmware so that's going to be coming soon um we've got pop-ups as well so pop-ups come up on the home screen so they'll pop up obviously here uh, what happens with pop-ups is they they pop up <laughs> and they'll uh, display on the screen the screen lights up and the keyboard lights up as well so if you're in a dark room it's really obvious to see that you've you've got a message um, that can get annoying if you're on public busy public so you can turn that off but um, I quite like it it just you know fills the screen with the notification um, for that way so going down we've got GPS just on or off um, we've got mobile repeater. This is a controversial one. We've always kind of shied away from having mobile repeaters on MeshCore because it affects the routing and stuff like that. Truth be told, for normal channel messaging, it doesn't really, really hurt things too much. This is only really to be used for um, situations where maybe you, you're on a hike or something, you've got a bunch of you with TDEX, but there's no mesh coverage. Um, you can literally turn this on and all of the devices will mesh together um, and you don't need to have like extra repeaters so they'll just all forward packets to each other so that's pretty cool to be able to turn that on and off if you're a festival rave sort of thing you know whatever you can actually have that turned on and you know even if you're in a building where there's no mesh coverage you're not reaching the mesh coverage outside you could do that um, which is pretty neat there so that's another feature sound settings at the moment that just does the volume control battery info system info um, they're all pretty self-explanatory so update firmware this is pretty cool you can actually update your firmware from an sd card so just put firmware on the sd card from the packages that we provide on meshcore.co.uk it will check the version that's on the t deck and if it's newer it will let you update you can actually get around that if you want to force upload 
Um, but yeah, it's a really straightforward way to, of updating a TDIP without a computer, so you can do it in the field now. Pretty neat. So the next one is unlock, similar process to the Ripple firmware. You can purchase a license key um, from meshcore.co.uk and then you know you can unlock some of the features that are locked as standard. So basic messaging you can do, stuff like that. All the, all the other little clever little features on here um, are behind that, um, that unlock. So it just goes to support the project, a bit like um, you know how the Ripple firmware works. And yeah, it's not like the cost of a beer in the UK or something like that. So yeah. So back to the main menu then, and I think we've covered most things on here apart from map. So this is the map view, the first initial map view before you go into the more detailed screens. Um, and I absolutely love this. Now this was designed um, originally for a V3 uh, to have on the tiny little OLED display. Like, so it had this really kind of like basic outline of the UK. But I've kept it on this firmware because I really like it. It's just absolutely cool to be able to see um, the mesh situation um, in real time, just like that. It's just so cool, isn't it? So we've got like south and north, and look at some of the coastal stations as well. There's Isle of Wight on there as well, um, which has become quite a big mesh hub lately. Um, shout out to you guys. But yeah, so you can see, you know, this is the, this is the a status of 300 nodes at the moment. Um, just madness. And as this kind of, you know, changes throughout the day, you see this, you know, these dots come and go. Um, but Basically, like a couple of days ago, a couple of repeaters went down um, that were connecting the north and the south. So you, you start to see sporadic stations on in the in the north rather than really solid areas. So at the moment, you can see north and south is is pretty um, is pretty well connected, and that's reflected in the public messages that we see from from the north as well. So yeah, really interesting. So if you if you tap this again, you'll go into a this is like a kind of vector map really it's not using tiles it's like the old school sort of way of doing it um, and I've got some roads on here and, and rivers you can see there and for me all I'm really interested in is seeing you know the area around and some of these repeaters if you zoom right in you can actually see the repeater names as well so you can sort of scroll around you can go down to like that sort of level um, and yeah you can see the repeater names there as well so this is quite interesting I'm going to develop this a bit more so there'll be more updates coming on this map but I've managed to put in most of the worldwide city names that you see you've got sort of uh, Brussels over there and you know you can scroll around that map and it, it covers pretty much everywhere but if you have got areas where you want a, a bunch of extra you know city names and stuff like that will go down to a finer detail let me know and I'll, I'll just add them in because they're only like GPS coordinates. I might actually enable them to be loaded from the SD card because they're only small little files. And then you can just like add which ones you want um, to your TD. But yeah, I quite like this view. Um, it's work in progress on the map side of things a little bit, but it does work quite well. And you can see the performance is, is pretty snappy on this little, little device here. Oh yeah, there is one more little nifty feature with this. You can see that last message there where there's a link in it. So if you long press that, you get a QR code you can um, scan with your phone. <laughs> so you can actually kind of not miss out on people that like to send URLs in their messages. <laughs> so that is about it, I think, guys. We've got trace here as well. So you can do trace routes um, directly from the front screen there. So yeah, I really hope you like this release, guys. Um, and if you've got a spare T deck, because you need one for Ripple and you obviously need one to be running this as well. Um, <laughs> So, um, yeah, get it loaded and let me know what you think as well. So it's going to be on the flasher um, time of this video goes up. And, um, yeah, we're, we're, like, we're on, like, there's three different firmwares for the T-Deck now on, on one website. So make sure you select the right one and the right serial number for the right one on there. Um, but, yeah, enjoy. And, yeah, let me know how it goes. There'll be more updates coming soon to this. So I will catch you next time, guys. 